Hello and welcome to this short introduction to English Family Law, which is brought to you by 36 Family. Uh, we're a team of specialist uh, barristers based in London, England. Uh, barristers are specialist uh, legal advocates, uh, trial advocates and uh, advisors yeah, who work in the English courts. We are one of the leading sets of barristers' chambers uh, working in family law in England, both for cases concerning children and for cases involving divorce and financial matters after divorce. I'll tell you a little bit more about what we do uh, a little later on and the services we offer. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Andrew Bajowski, KC. I'm a senior barrister with nearing three decades of work in uh, and experience of practicing family law. I now entirely focus my practice on financial uh, aspects of relationship breakdown. Um, some of you will may or may well have already met me at meetings of the International Family, uh, at, sorry, the International Academy of Family Lawyers, of which I'm a fellow. You'll be hearing from me and from three of my very experienced senior colleagues in the course of this webinar. They'll introduce themselves uh, in turn when they speak. Uh, this webinar is uh, divided into six uh, parts on different topics. Our aim is to give you as lawyers who don't practice in England and Wales a general introduction to the family law in this jurisdiction. It will be fairly general uh, as the detailed specifics are far too much to cover in the space of a short webinar like this and you'll in any event need to take uh, specialist advice from an English lawyer in the event of a claim being brought in, these into the, in this country uh, or any case that your client needs advice on concerning English law. We'll also give you a resume of the services that we provide here at 36 Family uh, and what we can offer to the international legal community in a world where the parties to family law disputes now very often have links to far more than one jurisdiction and England is very often one of those jurisdictions uh, that, that arises. I'm going to tell you a little bit uh, more about us here at 36 Family to begin with. Uh, as I've said, we are a barrister's chambers and we have around 50 barristers who are specialists working in uh, solely in family law. They include a number of senior lawyers known as King's Counsel and the rest are barristers with experience ranging from the very newly qualified right through to those who have approaching 50 years of experience of practicing family law. Although most of our work is entirely domestic English work within uh, the English jurisdiction, we also offer, offer advice and representation on international family law issues uh, to the wider uh, community around the world. Our services are able to meet the needs therefore of clients both in the UK whose affairs have international aspects and also the needs of clients based overseas who need the assistance of English lawyers uh, dealing with claims within the courts of England and Wales. We also deal with the enforcement of orders made in other jurisdictions here in England and Wales. Several of our barristers are elected as fellows of the prestigious International Academy of Family Lawyers and a number of our barristers speak a foreign language. We might be able to assist your clients in a number of different ways. You may have a client who becomes involved in proceedings in England and Wales, in which case we can act for that client in the courts here. Sometimes you or the client may even be able to instruct us directly to do that. We can also provide expert evidence for foreign courts to use uh, or to other uh, bodies in other jurisdictions about matters of English family law, including even appearing as an expert witness on, foreign, uh, on English law in foreign proceedings. Many of our barristers have regularly done that. We can draft agreements or court pleadings for clients, including nuptial agreements to mirror the terms of an agreement that's been contracted in another jurisdiction. Many of our barristers are also mediators or arbitrators who can help to resolve disputes uh, between, between parties arising from uh, divorce or other marital or family breakdown. Many also act as neutral evaluation experts who provide a service to both parties, giving them an objective appraisal of the merits of their case. And you can find out a lot more about what we offer and the services that are available at our website, which is www.36group.co.uk under the uh, family header, or you can just Google 36 family. So let's turn to uh, the English family justice system by starting, first of all, with the way the law is structured. Although the United Kingdom is the internationally recognized state that we all live in, and it's the state that's named on the passports of British citizens. There are actually three separate countries for the purposes of uh, family law. 
We have England and Wales, which is one jurisdiction for these purposes, and then separately Scotland and Northern Ireland, which are different jurisdictions with, in some respects, very different family law to that which exists in England and Wales, and also a separate court system. Other parts of the British Isles, like the Channel Islands and the Isle of Man, are also separate jurisdictions for family law purposes, although they very often apply family law, which is very similar to English family law. The court system here has a number of tiers. Almost all family work is done now in the family court, with cases allocated to different levels of judges, with magistrates and district judges at the lowest tier, and high court judges at the highest level. Appeals go to the Court of Appeal and from there, very occasionally to the Supreme Court as the highest court. There's also a tribunal system which deals with aspects of child maintenance. Most family proceedings take place in private, although the media can sometimes attend, but what they can report is usually heavily controlled. Most proceedings are also confidential and anonymous, although that's not always the case in the cases concerning divorce and finances. Although most family law is derived from the statutory law in the form of Acts of Parliament, England has a common law system where law is based on previous decisions of judges. And so the law is developed and changes based on the case decisions of the judges. That is an aspect of English law which is very different to the systems of law in most European countries and elsewhere where the law is based on a civil code. The fact that most family law allows judges a great deal of discretion, combined with the fact that previous decisions by judges influence the decisions of later judges where a case has similar facts, means that English family law isn't always easy to pin down very precisely. The main statutes that are involved are the Matrimonial Causes Act 1973, the Children Act 1989, the Adoption and Children Act 2002, the Family Law Act 1986, and the Family Law Act 1996 and we'll deal with some of the relevant provisions of those statutes as we go along through this webinar. The types of cases which arise in family law can be broken down into four groups of cases. There are financial remedies cases, which are the, the disputes over property or maintenance after relationships end. There are child maintenance matters, which are usually dealt with by the child maintenance service which is a government department, where both parents and the child reside in England. But child maintenance is dealt with by the courts, where one of the parents or the child lives in another country. So many of the international cases that we're dealing with, and the cases that you're likely to be involved with, will be dealt with through the courts. Orders relating to children, including disputes over which of the parents the child's going to live with, when the child spends time with each parent, uh, and uh, specific provisions for the appointment of special guardians to care for children in place of their parents, adoption orders, and what are known as public law proceedings, where the state intervenes to protect the welfare of children who are suffering harm or abuse or neglect. Those are the categories that deal with children disputes. Finally, there are those proceedings which deal with parties' status. They may be those that recognize a person as a parent of a child, to recognise a marriage, which may have been conducted in another country outside of England and Wales, to recognise a divorce from another country, or of course, to end a marriage by divorce. In England, proceedings over property and money are almost always conducted separately from the proceedings which concern the children. There are usually different judges and even different lawyers representing the parties in the two sets of proceedings, and the two sets of proceedings run through the courts fairly independently of each other. That is a fairly important difference from the usual practice uh, in the country, uh, in many countries in the world, and probably very different to what you do in the jurisdiction where you normally practice. As well as the financial remedies orders which a court can make when a divorce takes place in England, there are some other powers which the courts have been given to make financial orders. The first is under what we call part three of the Matrimonial and Family Proceedings Act 1984 which is where a divorce has been obtained in a country outside England and Wales, but where the English court takes the view it should make additional financial orders in England. My colleague Paul Infield will talk about that in part three of this webinar. Child maintenance, as I've already mentioned, is sometimes dealt with by the child maintenance service rather than the courts. And then there are powers under section 15 and schedule one of the Children Act 1989, which make orders for the benefit of children against one or even both of their parents. And that's a power which applies to couples who are not married 
as well as to those who are married. Thank you for watching this part of the webinar. In part two of the webinar, my colleague Marissa Allman will introduce you to how the system for obtaining a divorce in England and Wales works.